Hello, everybody. Welcome to Transcend with NNG podcast, where I am your host, New Nation Goddess, also known as Brittany Walker. So for today's episode, episode eight, we're touching on frequency, social synergy, guys, social synergy. This is so, so, so important. It is the last uh, frequency we're going to hit before we hit our authentic activation. So it is frequency number seven. And in today's episode, we're going to be learning how to build a network and become more attractable within our community. Just having urban development, being able to tap in with our community to make us much stronger. All right, guys. So I always like to start the episode off with an I am statement. I representing inspiration, A representing affirmations, M representing manifestations. So the I am power statement for today is I stand firm in advocating for not only myself, but for my community so that we may rise above and conquer what's rightfully ours. Ashe. All right, guys. So today's episode, we are going to be bringing on Jalen Gordon from Afrocentric Communa University. All right, guys. So let me just tell you a little bit about Jalen. She is a strategist, a black mama, a Sora, a coach, a consultant, an avid reader, a community builder, a black millennial, a womanist and proud visionary and founder of, again, the Afrocentric Communa University, LLC. That is a consulting company that helps activistpreneurs Align culture plus activism plus entrepreneurship. She has the value of helping others figure out how to do business from an anti-white supremacist, anti-patriarchal, patriarchal, my apologies, and Afrocentric framework. It is essential that we centralize our cultural ways of being in a world that tries its best to erase who we are and how we be. She values rejoicing in the small wins and those wins that affirm the possibilities of living in an unshackled imagination. Please welcome Jalen Gordon, guys. Hi, Hi. Jalen. Welcome to Transcend with NNG Podcast. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm so happy to be here. So thank you for inviting me. Awesome. Awesome. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. And yes, we are so excited to have you on today. So we always like to bring on guys a book reference that represents what this episode or what this theme is about. And I had to ask Jalen, what is one of her favorite books? And she did recommend The Healing Wisdom of Africa by Maladoma Patrice. And it's the last name, Somme. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is that how you pronounce it? So let us know why that book. What is? I know it's so many to choose from, but why that book for you? I know. <laughs> um, this book for me. So I was introduced to this text in 2017 when I was in graduate school at Clark Atlanta, pursuing my master's in African-American studies. And this was one of our core foundational texts that we were supposed to read before coming to campus. And it really is that for me. It is a core foundational Afrocentric framework on how to um, be and structure your life in a way that honors um, the diaspora, the land, your ancestors. I mean, it's, it's a framework. So that's why. We are the dreams and hopes of the slave. Come on now. I'm here for it. I see. Yes. All right, guys. So, you know, I always like to give a tea of the day. So we will be sipping throughout the episode. Um, Today I have a golden milk. Come on, plug Afrocentric University. Yes. So I am having a golden mm-hmm. milk hibiscus. So I have some Jamaican hibiscus, some rose hip, ginger, cinnamon, turmeric. That's great for our melanin and opening up our penile gland to help with our creativity and to tap into the power that melanin people possess that you can get from the sun as well, but we can get it from herbs and high vibrational foods. And then I have we go. lemon peel, a little bit of orange peel. So I'm going to take a sip and we about to get into this chai. See, people talking about what's the tea. I've been talking about what's the chai. So let's get up oh into my it. Gosh. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> let's get to it. So Jalen, please tell us more about Afrocentric University, what you guys are doing. I just saw that you have put out an impact report, which was 
looking amazing. Like, oh, thank one you. Point. Okay. <laughs> give us some more information about the organization. Sure. So the Afrocentric Community is an African-centered consulting firm for activistpreneurs. Those are our clients. And all of our clients are in this very delicate space of trying to combine culture, activism, and entrepreneurship. So that could really be anybody. We've served doulas, we've ser or birth workers, we've served Afrocentric schools, all the way to, oh my gosh, fashion design, fashion coaches, like people mm -hmm. who are very, very interested in doing their life work from an Afrocentric or activist perspective. So that's what we do on a consistent basis. We also have a private um, online community um, that folks can join. So one of the pillars of our work is just making sure that we offer wraparound support, which that comes from the village, right? It's called Absolutely. the Community Village and it's a space for folks who really desire coaching and consulting, but don't have the financial means to do so. So it's $4.99 a month. They have access to other activistpreneurs and myself. We convene, we have workshops, we have meetings. I mean, it's a very, very beautiful space. So that's what we do. It's so the folks cool. get it together. Yes. I want to <laughs> honor you, take a moment to honor you and sing gratitude because okay. this is phenomenal. Um, I you. wish... You're welcome, love. Absolutely. I wish that we had more things like this when I was coming up. I'm an 80s baby. So, you know, I grew up with parents that were Malcolm X, Angela Davis. And, you know, that is on a different spectrum. So it's like trying to take like our those elders, then add our millennial touch to it. But then just trying to rebuild. This is just a beautiful thing that you're doing. So I do want to send gratitude for you doing all of this mm -hmm. and tapping into your purpose and helping us become more sustainable in this culture. We're making the best out of the economy that we have. All right. That's so, it. Let's talk about some things. So how important is it for our culture to get involved um, with their community? Oh my goodness. It's, it's essential. And I believe COVID taught us this <laughs> in, a, in a very, very hard way, right? Especially for Black folks, and I say Black is in the political identity. Um, it's so important for us to practice interdependency, right? White supremacy, um, white culture, whiteness, <laughs> and all of the oppression that comes with those two systems really do try. I mean, they are invested in making sure that we do stay separate, that we are not aligned, that we cannot come together, that we cannot share resources, um, because we know what happens when Black people come together and share, and share freely, and share generously. So um, <clears throat> in order for, I believe, Black people to not only survive, but thrive, yes. um, we have to stay connected to our communities. And that could be our lived communities, our school communities, our church communities, our regional. I mean, you can be super expansive about how you define community. Um, but the thorough, the thing that keeps it all together is us, right? Like no matter which which community you Bad. decide to choose, there's going to be Black people in all of them. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it's important for our thrivership, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you touched on something when we come together, how powerful we are. You know, the system has been made to brainwash us and keep us in our phones and keep us in TV and keep our heads down where we're not paying attention to what's going on in the skies, what's really going on in the world. And so I think it is important when we do come together, how powerful that is. I grew up in mm -hmm. Houston. Um, shout out. I love Houston. <laughs> I, I love Houston. Like, <laughs> Being so diverse, the one thing that I always respected is all my schools were pretty diverse where I grew up in. Um, I originally grew up in A-Leaf, but halfway through my K-12, through we went to Fort Bend, and I was just opened up to all types of cultures. And one thing I respected, all the Orientals stuck together, all the Indians stuck together, all the Jewish. And not so much that of them hanging out when it came to business and their economy, 
they circulated their dollars within and they truly took time to build up their communities. And I always was like, why can't we do that? Why can't we come together and just thrive and really trust one another and really have, you know, productivity and positivity and really support one another, you know, pouring back into our farms, pouring back into our grocery stores, make sure all the products that you buy are melanin owned, you know, so I love everything that you said with thrivership, like us coming together and having power and thrivership. So why uh-huh. is it, you mentioned the word essential and I love that. So why is it essential to build a network or even build strategic partnerships within the community? Yeah, um, I'm going to I'm going to think about my partners who I call clients, um, activist preneurs, right? When it's time to start building your life work or developing your life work, and that could be your purpose, that could be your business, your nonprofit, your school, look, your band, whoever, <laughs> um, without a Without a network, it's going to be so much harder <laughs> to be able to get get the word out, to do brand awareness, and to gather resources, right? And again, we can be expansive about what resources looks like. It could be financial. It could be a room for the band to practice in, right? It could be access to your city council member. Um, who we know have access to a lot of local city dollars. So when we talk about building a network to build our communities or to build our life work, um, when you don't have that, it just, I've noticed that it just takes so much longer or it can take so much longer um, to gather the resources that you need to develop or build the thing. So, Absolutely. I also believe that it only takes that one person or that one organization it only takes to one. here to here and just building strategic partnerships. Like you said, it's not even a, so <clears throat> I'm a take from you. It's an evil give, you know, sure. you give, I reciprocate, so on and so forth, but just having the ability just to meet people and you stumble upon that one specific person. Um, it will take your life to the next level. It will be that strategic partnership that you weren't even looking for. You might've been manifesting it and then they fall into your lap. And typically those times happen when you're involved in the community, when you're networking and you just happen to go to an event that you might just meet that one person that you've been needing to take your Uh business or your organization or even your goal to the next level. Sure. And I think the key to all of that is intention Right. Like when you are building relationships or when you are building strategic partnerships, the first thing is to be very clear about what you need and how you need to get there. Right. And that doesn't have to. I know this might sound like, oh, this like, are you manipulating relationships? No, no, Um, no. (laughs) We all have our genius in the world. And when you are clear about where your gaps are and what other people's geniuses are, you can bring those things together to build and develop, right? And those like people have the geniuses, right? So I think that's a key part of networking as well. This isn't just going out for going out sake. There is a clear intention and function of the space and most importantly, how you show up to the space, right? So I can say, oh, I'm going to go to um, the city council meeting. And my intention before I leave the city council meeting is I get a business card, right? Or I get, I meet three other activists in the room who are also advocating for their communities, right? That's, I think that's the difference between networking and I'ma just I'ma just go hang out in the back and see what's going on, right? Nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want to do. That's your intention for showing up to that space. Um, so yeah. You mentioned ge- knowing the geniuses. You tugged on my heartstring with that one. Um, shout out to my mentor, DJ <laughs> Moultrie, mentor to our family. He um, operates the Black Equity Network and the Acquisitions Network, but. 
he when we first started connecting he made me take what is your genius test he made me do what has been your human design and what is your genius test so when i started doing my consulting business i had already had where i needed to know their strengths so i would make my clients take a strengths test they take a weakness test i wanted to know their birth chart i need to know your sun moon and your rising yep. so i know what i'm dealing with baby what what's going on right because what's if you going have on? a moment let me figure out how my scorpion sun can get you to pull that out of there right so that's, that's it that's, that's it, it. But then also knowing what their human design and their genius is, because like you said, when you know those things and when it's time to connect with other people, you could be a blaze, but you need to connect with a dynamo and you can take that to the whole other level where your weaknesses may be at, may be somebody else's strengths that is supposed to be meant for your path for you to build that strategic partnership with. So you saying the geniuses, like I absolutely love that you mentioned that that is an amazing um feature that a lot of us melanin people are unaware of i've talked to every single one of my clients never knew that they could have a genius or a human design they're like wait what what is that i'm like y'all need to get on so we can make some stuff happen because <laughs> there's other people other races and ethnicities that have been progressing because of things that the knowledge that they had so now that we have those resources we're trying to pour it out to the community yeah, yeah. And I think a big part of the concept of social synergy is recognizing that you're not supposed to have all of the tools. Oh, <laughs> right? Yeah. I was having a conversation with someone yesterday. It's like, oh, well, sis, you don't, I mean, you don't like social media because that's, that's just not your jammy jam. Completely right. fine, right? I don't want you to um, <clears throat> beat yourself up. And that was very like gory. I couldn't think of anything else. I don't want you to, you know, like harp on yourself because you struggle with building this relationship with Instagram or TikTok. You not supposed to do all the things. Cool. Now let's talk about how we find other room or how we make space for other people um, to show up and be in relationship with you because social synergy requires other people, friend. Like it can't just be you. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's where, like you said, that delegation comes in. If you know, like you said, social media is not your, your judge. Don't force yourself to do it because then you're going to waste so much time trying to force yourself to do something that's not your thing. And like you said, that's where you incorporate, let's try to budget at least getting you a VA or somebody that can do your content for you. Oh. Um, that way you mm -hmm. don't have to stress about a weakness of yours. And it's nothing exactly. wrong with having weaknesses. I think us as a culture, we view weaknesses as a bad thing. But once you know what your weaknesses are, like we have that, um, what is it? The strong black woman syndrome. Like we could do everything. We're superhuman. We're superwoman. We could, no, no. That's why we stress out. <laughs> and that's why we don't have yeah. no self care. And we trying to do what mama and grandmama did because that was what we were conditioned to learn. So unlearning that feature. And like you said, being able to take that step back and be like, let's see who we can delegate this to. Mm -hmm. I love that you have that. So what defining moment made you realize it was time to bridge the gap between activism, culture, and entrepreneurship? Oh my gosh, it's such a good question. <laughs> um, there's two ways I answer this question. So <laughs> the first is um, I, there was a moment where I was spiritually called to do this work. <laughs> Um, I was in a altar prayer session and I was just, just freaking out. Just, I don't understand what's going on. Like, I need some help. I need some help. <laughs> like, help me, help me. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, God spoke out to me and said, um, Hey, this vision that you're currently having, like, that's it. And this was like mm -hmm. a 30, 45 minute, um, altar prayer session. And I was having very vivid imagery of me doing consulting but like a very different type of consulting that i'd never seen before <clears throat> and i don't even think i had the vocabulary to categorize it as consulting at the time it was just helping nonprofits or like black organizations activists whatever right and so um i said okay well i have these visions all the time so i need i need a little something else I need, I need like a double confirmation, you know, because this is not, it's not new for me. 
<laughs> so um, I was instructed to grab a book on my bookshelf. And when I was like, okay, cool. God said, you know, like open it to just a random page. Just open it. Just, just be obedient. I said, okay, cool. Opened it. And the book was an anthology of essays by black women. And so the page I opened it to said, I accept this call. Like that was the name of the speech. And I was like, I, loud and clear. Say less. Let's go. Right. <laughs> so um, that, that's one particular moment. And then another moment is I was in graduate school and this is like a series of moments mm -hmm. and I was just so confused. Right. Um, I didn't feel like it was my place to create theory, but I really felt like it was more of my place to take all of the wonderful theories I was learning about and bring them back to the black community because mm -hmm. that's where I saw, um, the gap like I was like oh these are like these are some answers these, these are like very clear answers to conversations and um, questions and challenges that I've heard from our people so that is the other answer to it is like I don't want to create theory I think there's enough theory out there but I want to make sure people have access to research and use it in manifestation so that is beautiful. One of my <laughs> other frequencies is called metaphysical methods. And I hone in on journaling, intentions, manifestations. And not just that I grew up Christian, but I'm more spiritual now. And Same. I grew up on <clears throat> pray, you pray, and God going to work it out. But I was never taught that once you throw that out there, you have to put action behind it. And you have to put something behind it to push that through the fact that you were able to pick up on those defining moments in that spiritual aha, like you have that sign that came to you that really lets you believe like, this is my purpose. This is what I'm supposed to do. Another thing that you called out that I just want to jump through the, the um, video and come give you a hug and embrace you was when you said, I realized what the gap was and I'm going to resolve that problem. The issue that I have with most of my clients or just entrepreneurship in, in general that I tell people, everybody wants overnight success. Everybody has a hustle. Mm. Nobody is really honing in on mm. what is your purpose? Are you providing sustainable development goals? There's this thing called sustainable development goals. It's like 17 goals that um, the economy, the global economy says, if you abide by one of these, your business is going to be successful because you're providing sustainability. The fact that you're mm -hmm. finding what the problem is and resolving it. Most people think, oh, I just come up with a good product, make a business, and then I'm going to be rich. And then two to three years in the business crumbles, they're upset because you didn't have no real sustainability. You weren't resolving any real problems. You wasn't trying to bridge a gap anywhere you just found mm -hmm. a quick hustle that you can make some quick money with and that's what that was so the fact that you're building well you're already built but the foundation your mission your values is based on bridging a gap resolving problems making sure that our community is aware of these things so that they could become better you like are tapping on everything that I literally <laughs> be trying to get our people to see. Like, it's nothing wrong with your great ideas because we're creative. Like, some people come up with ideas and I'm like, that is a really dope concept. But then you need to take that money and then go invest it in another business that's going to provide sustainability mm -hmm. for our culture. So I love that you tapped on bridging that gap. So you mentioned oh, about being, you. you're welcome, love. You're welcome. You mentioned about being a black millennial, so I wanted to know, as a melanin millennial, what obstacles have you overcome to define your purpose and get involved? Yeah, um, so I'll start with my age because that has a lot to do with my experience. So I just turned 29. I'm fairly young. <laughs> um yeah, and a lot of my obstacles have centered around, like, ageism, right? And the fact that I present rather young. <laughs> so that's always, um, that's always, you know, an experience. I do a lot of work 
in older historical black communities with which comes with black women matriarchs right <laughs> so there's always uh a, there's always a journey amen it's a journey uh <laughs> trying to try to do that so that's definitely an obstacle um that i've had to face um because especially in a lot of my professional roles i was in a management or like delegation type of role and you know that can be hard for some folks so i'll say that's one of the obstacles um that i've experienced and the other obstacle is staying encouraged right staying encouraged because i am trying to create something i don't think many people have seen before Correct. And that is completely okay. <laughs> right? So, and there is um, somebody that I absolutely love. Her name is uh, Kimberly, Kimberly Foster, who is the founder of For Harriet. And she has this clip where she talks about, um, I love the fact that I'm building something that I've never seen before. I love the fact that I get to wake up every day and, like, choose my life purpose and my life work and my vision over okay. someone else's but how that becomes an obstacle is um, it can be really challenging to find support it can be challenging to find my people um, it can be challenging to you know this whole concept of belonging <clears throat> and not resorting to what society history um you know, the safe option. So that's definitely an obstacle. Um, and I would say those are the two main ones that I've always just, um, you know, being in relate close relationship with, amen. <laughs> so. and I want to touch on both of those because I completely understand your first one. I too was always that I'm 37. I just turned 37, but I, when I was in corporate America, I was always that person that I always held a leadership managerial position and I would always have that person that's like, girl, you the same age as my daughter or you the same age as my granddaughter. And I'm like, I don't give a, f you going to do what I tell you to do. And they try, just to try to do my job. <laughs> I'm like At first I was more like, oh no. But then after I got stuck a couple times, that, that scorpion tail was like, look, y'all backing me into the corner. I'm about to start stinging you because you have to respect <laughs> that I have this position. And it's hard to get women in our community. Like you said, that matriarch, they have that set like, girl, you like my daughter. You're like my, you know, my niece, my granddaughter. And sometimes it's hard to get them to allow us to have that space. But the fact that you are still demanding that, um, just speaks volumes because most people crumble and then they are not able to fulfill their purpose or they feel discouraged or feel like they're not supported. So going into your second one, um, I used to be the same way. I'm like, I have this amazing idea. Nobody's wanted to support. At first, everybody was like, yeah, 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 but nobody's caring. And then my mentor had to beat it into my head. Like everybody that is of greatness, that 5%, that you have 85% of the world that's typically followers, they're brainwashed, they're conforming to society. You have that 10% um, that they have, they've elevated a frequency past that 85%, but they all about just becoming millionaires. They just want to sell, 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 sell. They're not really wanting to help. And then you got that 5%, that, that golden 5%. Like Erica Badu has a video about this and I loved it. And she explained that 5% you, is going to get real lonely because you have a purpose that is not meant for you to go through that journey with other people. But once that purpose blossoms and it flourishes, all the people that's been to come, it's going to come. But it teaches you how you're going to have to kind of go through some of these hard times and be lonely. And lonely not feeling like, oh my God, but knowing that you're by yourself and you're able to do it. And it's only going to make you stronger. It's only going to make you more independent. <clears throat> and it's only going to make you more successful. But it's hard at first, especially when you're young and when you're in your 20s, you're like, what? Like, that's a lot for me to take on. Like you said, I still have to be a mom. Mm -hmm. I still have to sustain. I still have other things to do. So the fact that you called that out is amazing 
And I think that is, those two are very common obstacles when it comes to a person of your caliber and not saying that like, oh, we have peasants behind us. Let's throw tomatoes at them. But I'm putting you on a high caliber because I can sense your frequency. I can sense your energy and you're like, it's God is glow all day, like melanin magic. So I love that you call that out because even with having this great organization and you having a smile on your face and you're pushing through us, women go through these things. Us people in this position have some hard shit that we have to deal with. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm cursing, but it's explicit. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> um, I love that you touched on that. So how can our listeners and everybody that's on, we're on multiple platforms, just shout out guys, you know, if it's video, you can see us on Spotify and YouTube, but we're also on Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Google. So anchor as well, but how can the listeners get more involved with developing social inner synergy? Mm -hmm. I would say the very first step is to get clear about what you need um, and recognize that that could take a really long time. Uh, for some folks, it could be a whole business quarter, three months. For some folks, it could be three hours, right? Your time is your time. <clears throat> and once you get clear to really set your intention about how to, um, how to insert X, <laughs> right? Whatever it is you need or want that to be. And then you go ahead and move forward and you find folks who can support you in whatever it is that you need. So um, just to speak from some folks that I know, it's like, okay, I really need I feel lonely. I'm clear on that. I need other people to thought partner with. I'm clear on that. My intention is to find those people <clears throat> that, you know, I can thought partner with. Hence the community village, right? Or if it's, um, I'm clear that I am not utilizing a very specific skill, right? I have this business, but I'm also an artist. I want to go to graduate school so I can see how I can merge my artistry with my oh. activistpreneurship. Go. <laughs> like, let's, let's apply, girl. Let's go <laughs> to school. Let's go to school. Right. Um, so those are, I mean, that's how you create social synergy. And getting clear can also include knowing what your boundaries are. Knowing yeah. what your capacity is, right? Yeah. My, I don't have the capacity to go out every weekend. So <laughs> maybe I need to look at an online community. <clears throat> I don't have the capacity to talk on the phone for two hours, right? right. I'm a text message kind of raw, right? <laughs> it's like, okay, cool. <laughs> so, so let's make it happen, you know? <laughs> so I think those would be my first steps with... Um, creating social synergy for specifically for black folks, specifically for black women. And that's women with an X. So. Absolutely. Yeah. You mentioned about the tribe and having those people. And even if you can't go out and find those people, I still say manifest it, write it down. Um, I want to shout out to Dr. Ashley Ray uh, Wade in Dallas, Fort Worth area. She goes by Reed with yes. Dr. Wade. I literally, for the last two years, have been manifesting. I want to find a pharmacist who's into holistic health, who believe doesn't believe in Western medicine, but trying to assist our culture with getting off of Western medicine. Somebody that is just natural and Afro is, you know, centric. I just was manifesting this person and actually fell into my lap. Like I randomly stumbled up on her. Then come to find out my spouse and her played on a basketball team in high school together. And it was just oh, that connection. And I'm like, how does, <sighs> I've been looking for you. Every time I see her, I'm like, girl, you know, I've been looking for you, right? So just even something along those lines, I wasn't specifically looking, but I had been manifesting and she just fell into my lap. <clears throat> just by me just maneuvering and actively working towards it. So again, if you are not purposely out just searching, you can still journal that. You can still be with intentional with your words about who you want in your 
tribe? Who do you want to share that energy with? Like you said, knowing your capacity, knowing your boundaries. Who I know is going to respect these boundaries and the people that can't respect them, they're going to have to go over here with their energy leech yourself and figure it out on their own. <laughs> so, but that's yes, just, yes. Um, can you tell us where you're headquartered at? If people wanted to come support in person and not just through your website, I, this is the time I want you to plug yourself. I need website info, Instagram, <laughs> Yeah, how can you in person? Um, now, this episode, it is currently, let me scroll back up, Wednesday, February 22nd. So we are in Black History Month. I am a person that you celebrate Black History all year round. Just don't take those 28 Listen. or 29 raggedy ass days they want to give us to support right. and acknowledge you do it year round. But how can <clears throat> people come out and be a part of Afrocentric community? How can they support Go ahead and give us all that chai. Sure. So I'll say the best place to go is Instagram. We are Afro C O M M University on Instagram. In our link tree in our bio, you can find our website, which is AfroCommuniversity.com. Um, the best place to get involved and um, be able to meet with us and be in community is through the Community Village. So that is our online community on Mighty Networks. It is $4.99 a month. We have uh, private events for folks who are in that community. And again, it's comprised of activistpreneurs. Originally, it was just for our clients, but we have opened it up to the general public. So you will get to be in relationship with other activistpreneurs all over the world. We have folks from Chicago, a lot of Houston, <laughs> Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, I mean, uh, we have yeah two folks in Chicago. So it's a great space to be. We're currently having a reading group called Rapper's Delight. So August 2023, August 2023 is the 50th anniversary of hip hop. So we are currently reading Rapper's text, hence the uh, title Rapper's Delight. So um, we started with the Tao of Wu by Wu-Tang, followed by Jay-Z's Made in America. Nipsey Hussle will be this month in February. And we're transitioning to Lauren Hill's book, She Begat This. June, we're reading Big Frida for Pride Month. And then, we, <laughs> and then we will close in August with ARS One's um, The Gospel of Hip Hop. So that's one thing we do. We have something called a Bragathon Dinner, and that is our in person upscale dining. I mean, it's all catered. Um, good food where we just come together and brag on ourselves as activistpreneurs that's not something we get to do often i mean we have monthly workshops and phone calls and happy hours i mean it's a really fun place to be for just 4.99 a month so I that's, love that. That's, that's where you should go. Come on. Yes. <laughs> I love it. And guys, I'm going to plug um Jayla's Instagram information and website information in the description of this bio. You gave me so much life naming those rappers. Both of my grandmas are from Louisiana, so Nola is like home. Okay. So, you said big friend. Yeah. Okay. I was like, we, yeah, we gonna read the book. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. So, guys, um, if you have any questions or concerns in regards to this episode for myself or for Jalen, you can reply to this episode on both Spotify and Anchor, but you are able to also send us your listener mail to my email address at info at nngconsulting.org. That's N is in new, N is in nation, and G is in goddess, consulting.org. I will plug that in the description as well. Just to recap, guys, we did touch on frequency number seven, social synergy, learning how to build a network and become attractive with Jalen Gordon of Afrocentric Community University. It has been such a pleasure to have you on and embrace this goddess energy and just to be able oh, to drop you. these gems to 
our fellow gods and goddesses. I just want to make sure that you guys are going to go like the podcast. Make sure you subscribe to our website at NNG. I'm sorry, NNGConsulting.org and our YouTube channel. You can find us at New Nation Goddess. But we just want to make sure that we manifest a positive, productive, and peaceful remainder of the day. Have a happy Wealth and Wellness Wednesday. And we will be seeing you guys next week. Peace. Peace.